to the book of Judges, chapter number 17. And I'll start there. Verse number 6. He says, In those days, Israel had no king, and everyone did as he saw fit. I believe that's one of the saddest backdrops of Scripture. He said, In those days, Israel had no king, and everyone did, one verse of Scripture says, what was right in his own eyes. And as I begin to listen, as I begin to look, and as I begin to watch, uh, my wife and I, co-pastor and I, we were traveling, we begin to travel, and I begin to see some things. Even before uh, the traveling began, we begin to see some things and watch how some things shifted and watch people. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to say some things today that may offend some of you. But I promise you this. Sometimes God offends the flesh to reveal what's on the inside of your heart. interesting that as we go and I've been, I've been watching and I watched and I, and, 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 and I watched because there's been no king in Israel every man has been doing what's right in his own eyes and I, and I hear all this talk and all this rhetoric and all this stuff about doing this, about doing that you know you got one person saying let's do this, you got another person saying let's do that, you got one person saying that we're going to do all these great things. You got one person saying, let's make America great again. And, and I got a question. When does America ever stop being great? America never stopped being great. It stopped striving to be godly. That's good. That's good. And I hear people saying, God is going to judge America. Well, is God going to judge America for the things we've done and not uh, judge uh, Haiti for the things they've done? Is God going to judge America but not judge Ethiopia or Nigeria or, 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 or Lithuania or Bosnia? It seems to me that the whole world has made a decision that there's no king in this place. And so we're going to do what's right in our own eyes. And so, and now you have different things and you have different people and you have the media making statements about different stuff. And you have, it's almost like you got one person selling guns <coughs> to both sides. The media is telling you this. And then they turn around and they go right back on the other side and tell them that. And then there's tension. And then they report on the tension. And then they go back and report on the tension and say that this group is wrong. And then they go back and say that this group is wrong. And they say that this group is hateful and that group is hateful. And then they go back and, they, and, they, and they're trying to compete against each other. And one of the things that's happening is... We're all sitting here sometimes confused. And one of the reasons why we're confused is because we pay more attention to what's happening in the media than what God is saying. Because there's been no king in Israel, because there's been no body that we recognize as king, because there's been nothing that we recognize as king, now you got everybody saying this, and you can't even hardly tell the world from the church, and you can't hardly tell the church from the world, and you got people saying this and people saying that, and, and everybody's going their own direction. Everybody's doing what makes me feel good and what is right to me. But what about what's right to God? That's right. You got people all over the world who are saying, you know, don't judge me, don't judge me. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm carefree. I got to go a little farther to pray for me now. And I'm gay. Let me tell you, you can disagree without being hateful. That's right. Amen. And just because I don't agree with what you're saying, it doesn't mean I don't love you. And so you got the media, and the media is saying, and check this out. There's a book, and I, and I talked to you about this a little while ago, and I don't want you to believe me. I want you to look it up, okay? It's called After the Ball. After the Ball. It says that we can turn, not we, they. That's what the book says. It says we, but I'm, I'm they. We can turn them, people who don't believe that homosexuality and it seems, and the funny thing is, well, I'll talk about that in a little bit, but it seems that it's a, we can turn anybody who doesn't believe that homosexuality is good into homosexual supporters inside a few years, just follow these six simple steps. And let's set six simple steps to change anybody's mind. Number one was put it in the media. Talk about it as often and as 
as loud as possible, make everybody, make everything seem great in it. Number two was just simply make them look like they're the superstars, make them look like they're this. And, and, I'm, and I'm not going to go any further into that, but I want you to look it up and read it. It's called After the Ball. And, and, and one of the things that it's talking about is just making people who don't believe that homosexuality is that, it talks about making them look bad, making them look like they're, they're, they're this and making them look like they're that. And, 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 I, and I need to, to, to tell you that because if you don't know that, you'll be brainwashed. People keep sending out signals saying certain things. Case in point, and I got to go some a little further, so pray for me. If all you see in the media is black people as drug dealers, pimps, hoochies, and all the other stuff, then that's all that you're going to think that they are. If every time you see a Mexican in, in, in something, and, and, and he's poor, he's fixing cars, he's doing whatever, then the only thing you're going to think is that they are. And if, all, and if every time we look at white people in the media, we see them foaming at the mouth and spotting racism stuff with, with, with two teeth and, 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 and all of them right, got one in the hand and, and the other three in their pocket, mm -hmm. then all we're going to think is that all white people are bad. Mm -hmm. right. Right. It's true. We got people saying stuff because it fits their own agenda. But nobody's talking for the Lord. I got to go a little further now, so pray for them. Because I'm tired of watching pastors get on TV and endorse somebody saying that somebody is from God or somebody's not from God and they hadn't heard from the Lord. It's true. And then you look a little further and you find out that one of the people who they're endorsing offered them a position on their cabinet. Mm. So I got a question. If it's from the Lord, then why you got to take a position or take money in order to, uh, to propagate that person? Mm. That's right. And so we got people. And, and, and you know the crazy thing about this whole thing is the, some of the world ain't confused about this. Because when we were in Jamaica, you, could, you wouldn't believe some of the things that Jamaican said to me. And when we were in Jamaica, you wouldn't believe some of the things that the British and the Scottish said to me when we were just, I was just kind of passing through, when we were just talking to different people, and, and, and I just got into conversation with different people, because I talk to anybody. I'm in the airport, I don't care, wherever. Amen. And, and one of the things that one of them said to me is, I don't know why y'all don't get that. If you look at, a, at people's lives, you can see whether they're from God or not. He said the same. He said, when I go to pick up, man, when I go to pick up a coconut, I inspect it. And I see if it's profitable for me to eat. When I go to pick up a fruit, I look at it and see if it's right. And if it's not right, I put it down. That's right. And he and he referenced an article, and I'm gonna read it to you real quick. He said, here are five ways that you can tell if a man or a woman has an evil heart. I'm gonna just check this out. Thank you, Jamaican friend. I <laughs> don't know your name, but you did me good. He says, number one, evil hearts are experts at creating confusion and, oh, wow. and contention. Oh, wow. He has a list of several scriptures there. I'll send it out to you if you need me to. Mm -hmm. Number two, it says evil hearts are experts at fooling others with their smooth speech and their flattering words. Mm -hmm. Number three, Evil hearts crave and demand control. Mm. And check this out. And their highest authority is their own self-reference. Mm. Wow. Think about that. Mm. Evil, I'm going to read that one again. Evil hearts crave and demand control, and their highest authority is their own self-reference. Mm. In other words, whenever they got to choose the, 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 the standard for right or wrong, they always look at themselves. This is right because I do it. Mm. Now check this out. Mm. Now, blame this. He says, evil hearts play on the sympathy of goodwill people and triumphant on, on playing the grace card. Check this out. Evil hearts, what they do is they judge everybody else by the actions, mm -hmm. but they judge themselves by their intentions. Mm -hmm. See, I'm willing to give grace to me, but I ain't going to give grace to Brother Dwayne. See, I'm going to judge Brother Dwayne by what he did, but I'm going to judge myself by what I meant to do. 
I'm going to judge Brother Dwayne based on the fact that he's not like me. Because I'm the standard of good. And if he's not like me, then therefore he must be evil. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Number five, this is the part that bothers me. It says, evil hearts have no conscience and no remorse. No regard for pain that it causes others. The only thing the evil heart wants to do is benefit itself. The only thing the evil heart wants to do is to plead its own cause so it can get what it wants. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? And so, and, and, and here's the, the problem that I have is that we got people in the church who are backing all this stuff up. So let me help you with something. The last time I checked, God is not a Republican. Okay, I got to go a little further for me. He's not a Democrat. That's right. Let me go a little further to pray for me. He's not an independent. That's right. This may be a light on the wall for some of y'all quick brains, but God is not white. That's right. Amen. You know, I said that one time, and when I said that, immediately one of the brothers that I was with, he was white, he said, well, he ain't black. I said, well, thank you for identifying that for me, because I was going to say that next. And God is not black. I know we got, we got brothers, well, you know, the black man and the this and the that and word and we done did this and the, and the centripetal force and the, the earth and the, and the gods. Is, no, God is not black. He's not white. He ain't Asian either. They're not Filipino, although Filipinos can't cook. God is not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent either. Let me tell you what he is. He's a king. Yes, he is. And he's a righteous judge. Mm -hmm. He's the exalted ruler over all the earth. He's the one who can sit in the was, be in the is, and be in the which is to come at the same time. <laughs> he's the all-powerful, all-knowing, yes, all-wise, yes. all-encompassing mm -hmm. God. Amen. And let me break that down for you. The word God yes. means he is the yes. source and he is the sustainer of all things. Yes, 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 it yes, means yes. all things came from him, yes, yes. all things are in him, yes. and all things are made by him. Yes. And since all things are his, then he has the right to say what it is we do with it. That's, right. That's God. Amen. So if you're asking me, well, did God do this? Or did, who is God? Or whatever, whatever. Hey, he's bigger than if you When you describe him, he's already beyond that. The writer says, if I had 10,000 tongues, I still wouldn't be able to praise him enough. God is so big and so powerful that you can't put him in a box. That's right. Amen. Maybe that's the problem. We brought God down so low and exalted us so high that sometimes we can't even tell the difference. God's not black. God's not white. God's not a Republican. God's not a Democrat. We need to stop that foolishness saying that God said some stuff that God never said. <laughs> and here's the reason why, because if the Bible says that if the, if the trumpet makes an unclear sound, who shall prepare themselves for battle? One of the problems that I'm having right now is that we can't figure out what God is saying in the church. The world can get together over a joint, mm -hmm. over, over some hoochie, uh -huh. over, 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 over music, mm -hmm. over every other thing, and we can't get together over the blood of Jesus. Come on. time for us to stop saying that right is right and wrong is wrong. That's right. You know, I had an issue because when we were sitting in the airport, we was, we was going on our way to the, um, to the resort, and the crazy thing happened. <laughs> when I have this thing where whenever anything happens, I always ask God, God, what are you saying? What do you think about this? And sometimes, it, and so it's no sooner than I had asked God, God, what are you saying about all this stuff? I sat down in the chair, and my wife walked off, and all of a sudden, right before she walked off, sat down in this couple. And I was like, oh, they're a cute couple. They're a cute little elderly couple. And then they opened their mouth. <laughs> and I said, Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> they started talking, and they started saying all kind of crazy stuff. Well, I wish everybody who comes to this country would speak the language or speak our language, mm -hmm. and this and that, and whatever, whatever. 
but I'm not righteous. They all want Jesus. And then they said something else. And every time they opened their mouth, they said something more and more stupid. And they followed it up with, but I'm not racist. <laughs> and they kept saying crazy stuff. And then they started talking about God and this and that and whatever, whatever. And then they kept going, but I'm not prejudiced. I'm not racist. And then I thought about it, and people began to walk over me. Now, it amazed me because white people began to walk over and get irritated with them. Black people began to walk over and get irritated with them. I look at them, and I was just like, don't bother them. They're drunk. <laughs> and they kept talking. But I'm not racist. And then as I began to go home and I walked and I looked in the cabinet when we got to the, the hotel, and then you know when you go on foreign trips, they provide a lot of alcohol for you. <laughs> I saw more alcohol than I had probably ever seen in the last 20 years. And, 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 you know, and it was in our cabinet. And, and, I, and I posted something on Facebook about it. But the crazy thing was I realized that that couple was responding to the way they were responding in part because they were drunk. Now the stuff was still in their heart. Because a drunk man will speak a sober man's mind. That's what the old folks used to tell me. <laughs> but it occurred to me that I shouldn't let anybody bother them because they were drunk. Mm. Isn't that what the world is, is doing? They're drunk off fear, mm. drunk off racism, drunk off prejudice, drunk off um, uh, hatred, mm. drunk off selfishness, drunk off people thinking they're this and thinking they're that. You know, and, 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 and the thing is, but the bottom line is, I have a choice as to whether I should choose what to do or not. Mm -hmm. I can choose to drink or I can choose not to drink. Even though it's there, I can choose to do it or choose not to do it. That's right. As believers, we have a choice. And the Bible says that what would God require of you, right? Mm -hmm. He says, but to do what? Justice. To live justly. Mm -hmm. What does it mean?